Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Somos Biology. In this particular lecture, we are going to talk about primary and secondary immune response. What are the difference between the two? But before talking about the difference, we also want to talk about the mechanism of primary immune response and the features and clinical relevance of primary immune response and secondary immune response. So immune response can be termed in a different way. Sometimes we term it in a way of innate immune response and adaptive immune response based on how our immune system is going to react uh, to the pathogen for the first time when they take entry and again uh, when they are trained for the second time when the same antigen takes entry based on that we classify it as a primary immune response and a secondary immune response. So primary immune response so let's let's start with uh, the first one the overview of the immune responses and I told you the immune uh, response the systems immune systems response are classified into the primary response where we have a first time encountering to an antigen and the secondary immune response is when the subsequent encounters are being made towards the same antigen. So you've been introduced with the antigen for the first time and your body is going to react that is primary response and if the same antigen is represented for the second time then your body provide some sort of response that is a secondary response. So primary responses are slower and less robust while the secondary response are faster and more effective and much more specific. Okay. Now specificity is maintained by both but the secondary immune response are much much more specific and much more channeled and faster. So let's first talk about the primary immune response. The definition is when the first immune response to a novel antigen. A novel antigen means the antigen which is unknown to you before that day. That is a novel antigen. So let's say that in this particular uh, diagram we have time in the x-axis and we have antibody concentration in the y-axis. So we have this two time in the x-axis antibody concentration in the y-axis. Now, what we can clearly see is that our immune system cells are there, the naive B cells are there, for example, which is not ready to produce any antibody, they don't know any signal, they don't get any signal, they don't know how to do it. But now you have initial exposure to an antigen that is capital A, let's say a virus, A virus, and then uh, your body starts showing the primary immune response. In the primary response, this naive B cell is going to produce short-lived plasma cell which will now have blueprint to produce specific antibody that can go against the antigen and can destroy the antigen. But this antibody production and the plasma cell that produces the antibody will be short lived. Okay? So that is a part of the primary response. The characteristic says that the onset is only 4 to 7 days after the first encounter of novel antigen. The low antibody levels the antibody levels here is that the antibody that is present in the primary immune response is IgM, immunoglobulin M antibody. They are short-lived response. Their response is not long-lived, they are short-lived. And mechanism. Naive B and T cells are activated by the antigen. So we have naive B cell gets activated based on the presence or encountering to the antigen and they become the plasma cell. Similarly, there are naive T cells present in the body which gets activated to the T helper cells or T regulatory cells upon encountering to that antigen. So that is the mechanism. Naive B and T cells are activated by the antigen. And plasma cells start producing IgM as the primary antibody for the primary response. And it can start producing IgG antibodies, which is going to be a major antibody of the secondary immune response. But they start producing with IgM, then move to IgG antibody production. And the memory cells generated for the future immunity. There are some memory cells present. What are memory B cells? Memory B cells now have the blueprint. You know who, in, like let's say you are sitting in your house, somebody enters in your house, a burglar, and try to steal something from you. You now have their photo. So next time you are well prepared, you know what to do. When the same burglar now visit you, you know the the from which direction the burglar will come what the burglar can do based on that you respond faster that is the idea of secondary immune response primary immune response takes time because in that case the body is encountering the pathogen or the uh, antigen the antigenic part of the pathogen for the first time but when it comes the next time then the body 
will have much better response in the secondary immune response. So the definition of secondary response is the rapid and robust response upon re-exposure to the same antigen. So you receive the same antigen, now you already prepared, you know the antigen, you know what antibody destroys that antigen. You continue to start making the antibody that will destroy that antigen now. So there's a secondary exposure to the same antigen that is A now. The memory B cells were there, memory B cells knew what are the antigens and what was the antibody that the memory cells produced. So now they will produce that antibody which will directly go and destroy the antigen and also can coat the pathogen for opsonization and further destruction. So the characteristic says that the response is very fast, one to three days, compared to the primary response, which were four to uh, which were four to seven days. High antibody levels. Uh, the antibody that is produced here is IgG or immunoglobulin G, and the concentration of antibody, if you measure earlier for IgM in the primary response, is much lower. But for IgG, the secondary response is uh, three four times even stronger or um, three four times more concentrated version of antibody of and in this case the IgG antibody will be produced and what happened here is also this is long lasting and this is efficient antibody the mechanism says that activation of memory B cells and T cells will be done not just the activation of naive B cell because we already have the memory B cells we already have the memory T cells from the earlier primary immune response so all we need to do is simply activate the memory B cells and memory T cells that's why the secondary immune response takes less time to accomplish compared to the primary immune response. Because in primary response, there were naive B cells and naive T cells, which we need to train and modify and activate. But in case of secondary immune response, the memory B cells and memory T cells are already, already present and they can start from there. And enhanced antibody production and affinity towards the antigen is also maintained. Now, what is the significance of the immune response? immunological memory uh, enables the rapid protection against the recurring infections that's why the secondary immune response is uh, the response to go when we are encountered with the antigen for the second time and it happens almost in most of the situations in our body where we keep on encountering with the similar kind of antigens again and again and our body's secondary immune response react very fast and protects us second is the vaccination it mimics the primary response to establish the memory function so that if the antigen encounter if your body antigen uh, if your body encounter with the antigen then the response can be faster that is how we utilize the primary immune response mechanism to develop vaccine and use the vaccination boosters those enhance the secondary response for a long term immunity so basically the primary uh, immune response is utilized that mechanism is utilized for vaccination and booster doses are basically uh, representing the activation of secondary immune response next is the disease management primary response combat new infections and secondary response prevents reinfections by the same antigen so now the last point that i want to say is the comparison the difference between primary response here in the left hand side and secondary response on the right hand side so first of all is antigen encounter primary response for the first time secondary response is a re-encounter onset primary response takes more time slow four to seven days where secondary response is faster one to three days antibody produced in primary response is primarily igm and little bit of igg concentration but in secondary response predominantly IgG at higher concentration. It can also produce IgA or IgE as well. Antibody levels in primary response concentrations are much low. For a secondary response, it is much, much higher. Affinity towards antigen, antigens, uh, and, uh, like affinity of antibodies like towards the antigen for primary response is low, for secondary response is high. Memory cells in primary response are generated for the first time from the naive a, uh, B cell and naive T cell, they generate the memory B cell and memory T cell. But in secondary response, we just activate the memory B cells. It was already present. And efficiency. Primary response is uh, less efficient, obviously, because it takes more time. And secondary immune response is highly, highly efficient. That concludes our understanding of 
the primary immune response and secondary immune response and i believe you have a clear idea after watching this video if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends and colleagues subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye